Hey guys, Brian with WorkshopAddict.com and we are going to let you in on a class with this Hypertherm 45 XP. We're just going to sit back, watch how it's used and learn something today. So stick around and check it out. Alright guys, we're going to talk about plasma cutting today. We're going to talk about the differences between plasma cutting and cutting with an oxy fuel torch, what some of the advantages are. Uh, when some of the disadvantages are, that sort of thing. Um, we've got a uh, Hypotherm PowerMax 45 XP, which is uh, one of four units in the new Hypotherm PowerMax series. They come with a Duramax torch. Um, they go 45, 65, 85, and 105. The amperages are rated in the numbers, so the 45 is a 45 amp machine, the 65 is a 65 amp machine, the 85 and 105 85 and 105 amps respectively. <clears throat> so if you look at the machine here, um, comes out of the box, you're going to have your torch lead here, your hand torch lead, and you're going to have a ground lead. They're both quick connect, um, plug and play, makes it real nice uh, for moving the unit around. If you do have a plasma table like what I have, uh, we use this in the shop and we use it on the CNC table. So you can plug and play real quick with the machine torches versus the hand torch. Um, easy to uh, hook up and move around quickly if you need to do that. Um, <clears throat> it also comes with the, uh, the consumable kit here. These are 85 amp consumables, uh, 85 amp electrodes, and then the 45 amp nozzles. Uh, comes with the electrodes, the nozzles, the shield deflector, the swirl ring, and the retaining cap here. Um, put these three together. To go onto the torch, you're going to start off with your retaining cap, put your swirl ring, um, you can put the nozzle in first, put your electrode in, like so, and then you put your swirl ring on there, and then your retaining cap or your uh, nozzle deflector here. Screw that on the torch, and you're going to be set up for cutting. Okay, it's a drag, what they call a drag tip, okay, which means you can contact the material while you're actually cutting. You can drag it across the material. Um, this is one of the things that uh, is somewhat proprietary to Hypotherm. Um, not a lot of the other hyper, uh, cutters, the plasma cutters that you'll see will have that drag option. You actually have to have a special tip for the drag option. Um, with Hypotherm, it comes standard out of the box that way. <clears throat> it also has a gouging tip accessory. We'll go over what that is and how it works when we do the, uh, the cutting demo. And it also has a what they call a fine cut. Um, these would be considered a standard cut. And then it also has a fine cut um, nozzle and deflector. And what that is for is your thinner uh, sheet metal. Um, something that you might want to get real detailed with if you're doing ornamental iron work or something like that. You can get a little bit more detail that's a lot smaller arc, a lot smaller cut kerf on it versus the uh, standard nozzle here, which would be right next to it there. <clears throat> um, as far as hypotherm goes, um, I've had hypotherms for quite a while now. Um, I really like the machine. They seem really versatile. It seems like a really solid machine. We put quite a few hours on them on the uh, on the plasma table and also on in the shop there. Um, I would say you know it's it's probably one of the better ones out on the market, if not the best one out on the market in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> in order to operate it, you need to have electricity. Um, this is an inverter style machine, which means there's no transformers inside. There's just a, there's a small transformer, and most of it, uh, most of the electricity is created by a circuit board inside, um, and electronics in the inside of the machine. Uh, we've got it plugged into the 220 volt, which is what it standard runs off of standard. The 220 volt single phase electricity, and then also compressed air. Now with your compressed shop air, you always want to make sure that uh, you've got uh, dry air, uh, clean dry air coming into it. So besides the uh, water separator that comes in the unit from the factory, I always recommend an external water separator in the line, uh, water separator and filter. That's the number one killer of your consumables, your electrodes and your nozzles is any kind of moisture that's coming through there and coming through that swirl ring. That'll eat them up quicker than quick. So you always want to make sure that you've got clean dry air coming through the, uh, through the system in order for it to cut and uh, you get the most life out of your consumables that way. All right, so to power the unit on, 
Um, the switch is in front here. Power the unit on. It's going to take a minute to uh, power up. You want to make sure that you got your air valve turned on. Um, if you don't have your air valve turned on, you'll get a little fault light here on the, uh, there's a little like air bottle there. You'll, that'll start flashing. That's when you know you might have low air pressure. Your air might not be on at all. So if that goes off, um, the little lightning bolt one here is a fault code. Um, usually does a certain amount of flashes or you might get a code on the screen here that'll tell you what the fault code is. You'll go to the owner's manual and it'll have a list of fault codes. It might have something with it, like the electrode stuck or uh, not sensing the tip or that sort of thing. So that'll give you a code on there um, so you know how to diagnose the problem. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got your settings here. You've got a cut setting right here. Um, and then this little button here flips it over to the gouge setting. All right, with a gouge setting, the air pressure will drop down a little bit and it does a little bit different, uh, I think a little bit different electrode waveform in order to do the gouging, that sort of thing. It's a real nice feature. That's one nice feature on these hypotherms that you don't find on a lot of other ones, um, the, uh, that gouge setting. And that's real nice for gouging out the welds or, you know, if you make a, make a bigger weld than what you need or you're disassembling something that you need to weld back together, it makes it real nice for gouging those welds out of there and then being able to, you know, clean them up and make a nice, you know, joint out of the an existing something that you took apart. Um, your amperage control here goes from 10 amps all the way up to 45 amps. Um, it says that this machine is rated for 7 inch, inch thick plate. Um, you might be able to sever 7 8 inch thick plate, but it's not going to be a real nice cut. Um, I would say at 45 amps, it'll probably cut the quarter inch all day long. It'll probably do pretty good at 3 8 of an inch. And then half inch, I would say, is probably going to be its max. Um, but a, they do claim that it'll cut up to 7 8 of an inch. So that, you know, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to actually get some thicker stuff and see, you know, if it'll actually do it or not. Um, most of the time, though, when you're running this thing, unless you're running on thinner sheet metal, um, anything like 3 16 and above, I would usually run it at anywhere from 40 to 45 amps. You get underneath that, you start cutting real thin stuff like 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 20 gauge. That's when you're going to drop it down to that, you know, 20 to 25 amp range and you use your fine cut tips for things like that. So, uh, that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll show you what it does for cutting and then we'll show you that gouging setting, why, why that's beneficial and we'll go from there. Okay, so we got our ground hooked up. We got some quarter inch material here. Um, you got a safety switch on the uh, torch here that you got to flip that up with your uh, finger there to pull the trigger, pull the trigger, arc activates, and you'll be able to cut. Um, so first we're gonna freehand across this and then we'll do the drag. We can show you the difference in that. clean, not a whole lot of dross on the back side of it, and the, you know, the more practice you have, the better you're going to get with this. Um, you should have very, very minimal dross on the back side of it. You see it's a lot less than what you'd get with an oxy fuel torch, that sort of thing. Um, and then with the drag feature, you put the tip right on there and drag it straight across. You can use different size material as a straight edge to help you cut, make a nice straight cut on it. Straight cut, a little bit easier to drag across on the uh, with the straight edge there. Makes the cut a little bit cleaner. You get a lot less ripples in it, that sort of thing. So uh, we got some three eighths material here. Go ahead and cut that. You have to use a little bit slower travel speed. The thicker material, the thicker the material, the slower you're going to go with your travel speed. So 
still fairly clean cut, fairly quick cut on 3 8 material. Um, nice thing about plasma cutting uh, versus the oxyfuel cutting, you don't have to wait for that material to warm up to that molten state. As soon as you pull the trigger, it's ready to go and you can start cutting with it. So it's a little bit quicker on your cutting. The other nice thing about plasma cutting is you're able to change direction fairly quick. You don't have to wait for that flame to catch up like what you do in oxyfuel cutting. So you can change change directions, you can do a lot of different designs, radiuses, you know, square corners, things like that. And you get a lot nicer, you know, a lot more nice square corner in there than what you would with an oxyfuel cutter. Um, we'll switch over to the fine cut tip now. Get the fine cut consumables, you're going to pull the shield off there, retaining ring, take your nozzle out, you're going to leave the same electrode in there, um, you can replace it with a fine cut tip there, a lot smaller hole than what the other nozzle is. Put your retaining ring back on it, and then a little bit different style shield deflector. Than what that one is there. This one's made for dragging. This is actually, you can only freehand with this. You're not supposed to drag with this tip here because it's going to contact. You're going to arc out the, uh, the nozzle and end up messing it up. See the difference in that? Um, see that cut curve? And it's kind of hard to see well. It's a lot smaller than what you get with this nozzle here. Um, I would say that's probably sixteenth of an inch cut curve to where you might be up to you know over that with that eighth of an inch maybe depending on the thickness of material that sort of thing. So, you got your fine cut tip, um, like you said, for doing the thinner sheet metals, things like that. Uh, your 18 gauges, 16 gauges, that sort of thing is where you'd use this or like ornamental iron work. And then uh, I switch over to the gouging. Same thing, take the retaining ring off. The retaining ring, the deflector shield. And then you're going to go with the gouging setup, a little bit different style than what the fine cut and the regular cut nozzle. This will make the arc fan out a little bit more. Alright, I'm actually going to blow that way. I'm going to switch over to your gouging setting on here. take that weld out of there in layers with that gouging setting. Now, like I said before, the nice thing about this here is if you do have, you know, thick metal or a lot of, lot of uh, weld or something like that that you need to remove either for repair 
or you're replacing a piece of steel or something like that, a wear part on a machine or a piece of equipment, you can gouge that weld right out of there. Say it was a T-joint, you could gouge that weld right out of that T-joint, take it right down uh, to the root of that joint. It pops right loose, very minimal grinding afterwards versus doing it with you know, an oxy fuel torch or even with a grinder. You know, obviously, you know, you try to grind that out, it's not going to be near as fast. You'd, it'd be, you know, you might be five, ten minutes trying to take that much material out with a grinder type of thing. With this, you can do it in seconds. So that's one nice thing about the gouging feature on these hypotherm machines is you're able to do that. You can move a, remove a lot of material in a quick hurry. It's fairly clean. This dross chips right off of here. pretty much leaves you with that channel that you removed there. So, um, those are the three basic uh, cutting setups on these machines here. They do have a long reach tip for getting into tight places, maybe getting into uh, frames or that sort of thing, uh, through holes and channels or that kind of thing. Um, so this is an uh, option that they do offer with this machine here. I've never used one before um, or had the need to use one type of thing, but it is a pretty neat you know, setup. I would imagine it's a fairly expensive setup given you know, the copper and the tungsten electro, that sort of thing. Um, when you talk about expense with these here, um, with the electrodes and nozzle setups, um, each of these are about five to six dollars a piece so you're about ten to twelve dollars just for those two pieces right there all right they are consumable so you know eventually over time they're going to wear um, <clears throat> when they do wear out you got to replace them it will affect the arc it'll give it a wider arc it won't give it as uh, fine of a point on the arc um, and then these caps and things like this um, i believe these are somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, you know 20 bucks uh, these retaining rings are a little bit more and the swirl ring, same thing, all these consumables. They're not, you know, they're not cheap, but if you take care of them, they last, you know, a good long time. Um, these swirl rings, you have to replace these periodically. What this does is it controls the air coming down in through the electrode, and uh, it does exactly what it says. It swirls the air around in there and helps with uh, stabilizing the arc, that sort of thing. And what you'll find on these here, what I found, is if they overheat them, if you're doing a lot of heavy duty cutting or you're in a you know tighter spot where a lot of that heat is reflected back on it, this uh, it'll carry back into the electrode and then these will warp. Um, when this fires, it actually comes back in there and hits that little spring. So this has got to move free in there. So once these swirl rings warp, they're basically junk. You got to put a new one in because it won't let that electrode function the way it's supposed to. So. Uh, other than that, you got any questions? So that's it. Plain in a nutshell, this is an awesome unit. We'll put some links in the description below. Leave some comments below and let us know what you think. As always, give us a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.